Hi, welcome to Avi's Kosher Kitchen. It's me, Avi, and I've got what I think is a very special show for you today. Very special recipe and very special things. And it's all going to be happy, starting with this glass of wine from our friends at kosherwine.com. Let's say, L'chaim Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pnei Geffen. Mmm. Very, very good. You should try some of this stuff. Casa de Cielo. Beautiful, beautiful. It's from Chile. A uh, Spanish wine, which ties right into the theme of what we're doing. We're doing a Happy Meal. Now I know what you're thinking. It's not that kind of Happy Meal. This is a Happy Meal that you're going to be happy preparing, happy serving, and everyone will be happy eating it. Trust me. We are using this. Say hello to my friend, the paella pan. Or are we being redundant? I'll tell you why we're being redundant in a minute. First, let's start off with what we're putting in into it, which is going to be some chicken. I've got to prep the chicken. I got to prep the pan. So heat goes on. We're going to go into a kind of a, a lower heat right now, just like that. Pan goes on. Okay, we're going to get a little bit hot. Now this pan, uh, the actual word paella, they say actually describes the pan itself. Uh, it's a shallow, flat pan, especially made for this kind of dish. I'll tell you about paella in a minute. Right, right away what I'm going to do is put a little bit of olive oil right in the pan and we're going to put one whole onion diced up, okay, nice, and it's going to start to, to go. And I'm going to put a pepper, nice red bell pepper. You can hear it starting to do its thing already, okay. In Spanish this is called a sofrito. Sofrito is a, uh, basically just onions, peppers, uh, maybe some garlic, just sauteed in a little bit of oil and it just gets nice and soft and the flavors commingle and that becomes a base for so many different dishes, including my meat paella. Now paella could be with seafood, shrimps and lobsters and stuff like that, but uh, this is Avi's Kosher Kitchen and shrimps and lobsters and stuff like that aren't kosher, so guess what? We're not cooking it, but we are cooking some great kosher chicken in it. You could have a meat paella. Um, and this is chicken from our friends over at Cole Foods. This is beautiful, no antibiotics, no growth hormones, uh, pastured, you know, free range. Uh, these guys, well, I'll tell you about more, a little bit more about it in a minute. While I've got this, uh, this starting to go, I want to get going in here some sausage. You heard me right, I said sausage. We're talking turkey sausage. This is turkey sausage, again, from our friends over at Cold Foods. This is a spicy sausage. Now, the traditional paella is also made with sausage, a chorizo, and it's a spicy sausage made, you know, from, you know, that animal that's we don't eat. At any rate, I'm going to just take, you can see I already started here, just cut these uh, sort of on the bias. So we have nice, uh, nice long pieces and they go in right in here, okay? We're going to do all of them. Now this is great because you've got the spice of this turkey sausage and you can see the fresh herbs in here. And again, the Cold Foods turkey uh, sausage, no nitrates, uh, no growth hormones, none of the bad stuff that you find so many times in, uh, in traditional sausages and things like that. Again, just cutting on the bias. You don't have to go too thin on these, by the way because they're going to be in here for a little while. And what we want to do is get all these flavors that we're going to be doing to co-mingle and intermingle with each other. And it's going to be a wonderful thing, trust me. Mix that in here. Okay, now, here's a little tip on the paella pan. The paella pan, as you can see, is larger than my burner. Traditionally, this is cooked uh, out the, in the campos, out in the fields, out in the, uh, the, 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 the places where they would harvest vegetables and stuff like that. The workers would uh, build a big fire, get one of these big paella pans, and they would fill it with whatever vegetables they had. And then depending on where they were, if they were out where there was a lot of game around, they would put uh, rabbits and chickens and fowl and stuff like that in it. If it was by the sea, then of course you had the sea. Um, so the big fire gave an even heat to the pan. Now you could take this and put it on your barbecue grill because most of us don't have a burner this big, but you got a barbecue, barbecue will work, okay? But I wanted to show you how to do it in your home 
because that's uh, where most people are going to end up doing this. By the way, if you have one of those big round kettle grills, uh, round pan, do the math, fits nicely, okay? At any rate, um, by the way, this is starting to smell like gangbusters already and we're just getting going. All right, now, while that's doing its thing, I want to season this great chicken from Cold Foods. Now what I have here is I have some boneless chicken thighs. What I did is I took the chicken thighs and I boned them. Now the bones that you have left over, the skin when you bone these things out, do not throw that out. Don't put that in your pot. You got a great uh, base for a stock, chicken stock, and you can actually take that and if you start throwing in some carrots and celery and stuff like that, you got chicken soup? Oh no! Anyway, what I want to do is season this up a little bit, and we're going to start with a little bit of kosher salt. And I, by the way, I've got some ch uh, six chicken legs on here. Oftentimes in a paella, the meat is all boneless. But uh, when you're cooking um, things like chicken that cook fast, like a chicken leg, I like to put that in whole because it just gives another uh, layer into things. And that's the whole thing of this is it's layered food but it's cooked in one layer. That may not make sense, but you'll see as we go through this how it will. Okay, so what I want to do is take a little kosher salt from up on high, season, okay? Move my uh, thigh meat around, season, so we get a nice covering of that. We're gonna flip our, our legs. Now, by the way, quick, quick, quick seasoning tip here. Notice that I'm using my left hand to touch and move the meat my right hand to season so that I don't get any chicken juice cooties into the seasoning itself, okay? Uh, and then we're gonna, of course, wash my hands afterwards. Little granulated garlic. Granulated garlic for me is always a great spice to put on anything with, with, a, with a meat base because what it does is a couple of things. If there is any gaminess to, to any kind of meat, and of course this is really nice and fresh, but if there is, it really helps to take that out. It's just a great neutralizer, equalizer. Now, what I have here is turmeric. Turmeric, however you want to pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce this, okay? I'll be honest with you. Uh, turmeric, turmeric. Everybody's got a different way to do it, okay? You could buy this already, uh, already um, ground and you, you shake it out of the dispenser, or you can get the root. The root is very hard to come by because you have to do it when it's in season. So what I've done, by the way, <clears throat> is uh, I take the roots when, when I can get them, and I freeze them. Freeze them, then just while they're frozen, just great, look at that, nice fresh turmeric right all over this. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you, turmeric on a chicken, oh, gives a nice flavor and from what I've been reading the uh, turmeric is actually a really really healthy spice for you to have too okay so you can see we've got that and I'll just for good measure we put a little bit of uh, the turmeric right in here okay now put this aside move this around you can see that look at that sauce is starting to brown up and nicely now here's my trick the paella pan, remember I said you want to have it nice and even heat on this thing, okay? That's why they have the big fires, okay? And I have a small fire which is concentrated in the center. So what I do is I move things to the side where it's not as hot. You do that. Now we're going to put a little more olive oil in here. Don't be afraid to add more. And here comes our chicken, okay? All of our chicken. The legs, the thigh meat. Everything goes in there, and you know what? Some of this turmeric that's left over, that's so good and healthy for We're gonna put that in there, and we're done with our cutting board. Let me wash my hands. Okay, hands thoroughly washed, and we're gonna move this in the center so you can see a little bit better. Now, what I really wanna do is get a lot of color onto this meat, and that's gonna take just a little bit of time to develop, but you wanna bring it out into one layer down here if you can, okay? Okay, and bring our sausages up in here. This is a dish, by the way, that when you cook it, you have to have patience because this needs to just cook. So what we're gonna do with our, with our video here is I'm gonna let it cook, I'm gonna come back, put some more stuff in, let it cook, 
and come back. We'll keep doing that so you can kind of see the progression of how this goes, okay? So here's our first, I'll be right back. Well, I'm sorry, second, because I was just right back from the washing of my hands, but our second, I'll be right back. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, and you can see that the chicken is starting to really brown up nicely. Now, don't get concerned that the bottom of this pan looks like it's burning. Okay, that is gold, my friends. That is gold. This is what they were really after was that scrapings from the pan. Now I'm going to move, again, things to the side. If you have a big burner or you want to get a little bit more even heat, you just kind of slide the pan to one side or the other. Now, paella, little oil, is based on this, rice. All paellas have rice. There's different kinds of rices. Some rices have more starch, some have less. This is a Valencia rice. This is where paella started from, in the Valencia region of Spain. So the rice there is a short grain rice, and what you want to do is put it in. This is about uh, a cup or so of rice, okay? I'm going to put that in, and I want it to just get a little brown. What you want kind of a crispiness to the rice in here. And I'm going to lower the heat down a little bit now, okay? You just check, good. Lowering the heat. I, was, I could do that if you're cooking on fire, it'd be a little bit more tough, okay? At this point, I've got a whole head of garlic. I've peeled it, and what I've also done with it is kind of given a, a, a big chop. You know, these aren't small little pieces. These are big, hearty. That goes in the whole head of garlic, okay? In fact, here's a, a nice big piece. That's fine. Let that, let that go in there. We want to get it happy. I don't want to put it in too early because garlic can have a tendency to burn quickly. So putting in when the heat is a little bit lower is going to still let it cook down nice in there. It's going to be, going to be wonderful, okay? Now, is that rice is in there. Now what we're going to do is we're adding our liquid. We have a couple things. I have two cups of chicken broth, okay? Now, of course, this is chicken broth or poultry broth from our friends over at Cold Foods, okay? I'm going to put in, and by the way, I'm going to put a little wine. I'm putting in a little of this Casa de Cielo Chardonnay. This is from Chile, from our friends at kosherwine.com. This is what I call my happy wine. I know all wine kind of makes you happy and all like that, but just like I've told you in the past, look at that label, it's beautiful. I'm going to put a, about a half a cup or so of that wine in there, okay? And besides the Chardonnay, they've got this beautiful, uh, Reserve Malbec Syrah, which is what I'm drinking right now, and a, uh, they've got a nice Merlot, and the bottle I don't have right now is the Cabernet Sauvignon, which is, I don't have it because I drank it all, what can I tell you, it's really good. Anyway, I'm going to put just a, a little bit more chicken broth in here, Now I have some that I made up, again, with the, uh, from Cold Foods Meats, the, uh, from the chicken, I took the, uh, when I deboned the um, thighs, earlier, I rendered it down, just rendered down that stock with uh, the, the bones and the uh, skin and things like that, and I put a little bit of salt in there, just a little bit of something to, to kind of flavor it up. Now, we're going to add the next secret must-have, you got to have it if you're making a paella, you got to have this saffron. It smells good. You don't need a lot. You see there's very little saffron here in this, in this okay? I'm just going to take it. I wait till I have the liquid because I want it to all go in this liquid. And you want to get every last drop of that saffron in there. Saffron is a very uh, expensive spice, pound for pound, but it really is a very potent spice. Okay, uh, really, really. Oh, and this, just the smell on it. We use this sometimes in a on a fish. Really, 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 really good. I'm gonna a little bit more on my hand. We'll just get it off there. You know. Okay, now, in addition to the saffron, I've got about a tablespoon of a sweet smoked paprika, okay? Just add this right in here, okay? Now, if you want a spicy paprika, you want to kick it up that way with some, with some heat, go for it, you know? That's your choice. That's the beauty of this dish, a paella, is that it's just got so many uh, layers and ingredients of things in there that bring dimension to it, okay? And the last thing we're going to put in at this point some bay leaves. I've got about four or five bay leaves here. Just kind of crush them a little bit and put them in here. I, by the way, I made this uh, 
kind of as a dry run last Shabbat. Nothing left. Nothing left, if you hear me. Okay, except my kids going, why are there leaves in the food? But you know, that's kids. <laughs> God bless them. At any rate, so this now just cooks down. Now, you don't need to cover this. Again, it's all kind of in one layer. And by the way, with all this liquid, make sure you get everything into there so that that liquid gets into the, fla the flavor of the liquid gets into into the chicken, the chicken gets into the liquid, into the rice, and everything just kind of cooks up. And now again, what's on the bottom of the pan is just going to come up, okay, because that liquid brings it up. Now I have to tell you about these paella pans. You could go and use a, you know, a, a regular little pan that you might have in, in the house to do this in. And, and you know, I guess it's going to be okay, but the paella pan is a special pan. Besides it being so big and flat, okay the bottom of the pan itself has little dimples like on a golf ball okay so you so if you look at it from underneath they would kind of stick out and from on the top here they kind of are little indentations like dimples what that does is it actually gives you more even heat distribution into the pan it also means that anything that's sticking it's not sticking so much into the dimples but on top so it really lifts off easily with just some liquid which makes the cleanup on these kind of pans really 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 a piece of cake so now this needs to just cook and get happy for uh, or happier I should say right it's got to cook uh, you know five ten minutes until the liquids absorbed uh, by the rice okay you can take your time with it I'll just crank it just a little bit and then we're gonna add in uh, two more uh, layers to this and then it's time to eat so again I'll be right back Okay, so it's been about another 10 minutes and you can see that a lot of the liquid is uh, getting out of here. And I uh, moved the pan around a little bit just to get a little bit more uh, even heat uh, around it. Now, I told you there's a couple more things that uh, we we're going to add. And you can see that this is just bringing that heat, the liquid in here. Okay, just about done. A couple more things I told you we we're going to add. And here we go. The first is some peas. I've got some nice sweet peas here and we're just going to add a bunch. Now, you could use... Uh, fresh peas or frozen peas to this but please try not to use canned peas because the canned peas are already in a liquid they're already going to be a little bit soft we want them to have a little bit of crunch to them that's why I put them in at the end and uh, actually the frozen peas do a really nice job of this just get some nice good organic ones and now I've got some uh, tomatoes you could use cherry tomatoes for this grape tomatoes these are grape tomatoes I've just half them and they go in I don't want to put these in again too soon because I don't want them to get all soggy in there and stuff like that I want them to just uh, have some nice uh, color and you can see all of a sudden it's kicked up the color of this dish tremendously and that's what we want we want that nice bright color because we're gonna first eat with our eyes eat with our nose or smell and then we're gonna eat with our mouth okay and now this is speaking of the smell if you were here, my friends, you would be going, is that ready yet? Is that ready yet? Is that ready? I got a spoon ready. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And that's exactly uh, how the paella uh, works, by the way. It's served exactly that way, uh, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Basically, the pan is taken right from the fire to the table, put there, and people just dig in, sometimes bypassing the plate, just grabbing their spoons and doing like this, you know. Listen, these are the guys that were working and they were very, very hungry. I know in our house we're not going to do that. You're going to serve it up on your plate, but still one pan right in the middle and that's it. I like to turn the chicken a little bit on this. The liquid's almost all absorbed at this point. We're going to take, finish this off with a little bit of fresh cilantro. I just like to take a little bit of fresh cilantro right on top and, um, you know, it just does a nice thing here. Just another, another layer, that's all. And then the traditional way to serve this, by the way, besides on the table, like I said, is we're going to take some lemon wedges and just lay your lemon wedges, you know, sort of at uh, all around here. And everybody would pick up a lemon wedge. You're not going to squeeze this in. You'd pick up your own lemon wedge and decide, do you, do you want to have a little lemon squoze in there or not? And uh, that's, that's how it kind of works. Look at that. Nice lemon wedges in there we uh, could take and just sort of 
arrange your, chi your, your, your legs here. And we got all this other great thigh meat. So this, this comes in like that. Just look at that. I gotta tell you, this is, I cheated. I tasted a little bit while I was uh, waiting for you guys and I can't wait for this to be over. So, you know, <laughs> it just needs a little bit more liquid to evaporate. By the way, I wanna tell you one more thing about this great Whole Foods chicken, if I haven't told you before. I told you no antibiotics, no growth hormones. Out in the pasture, these guys are out having chicken bliss. They're playing all their chicken games together. You know, chicken tag, and chicken hide and go seek, and they're wondering why Harold's on the other side of the road. You know, all that stuff. In fact, they're even playing chicken with each other. And then they have this nice, beautiful life, and then they come here and we eat them. And that's not a bad thing because if you're gonna eat chicken, eat chicken that lived a good life and that doesn't have all the, the junk that, uh, that a lot of the other chickens have in it, okay? So uh, again, thank you to our friends over at Cold Foods. I wanna thank our friends over at uh, kosherwine.com for this beautiful Casa de Cielo wine, uh, which we actually used in here. And uh, until next time, uh, I'm gonna sign off early because I can't wait to get to this, okay? so. Uh, I'm Avi. Enjoy your paella wherever you may be, and uh, send me a picture. Let me know how it comes out. Uh, and let, by the way, like all of us on Facebook and all that other stuff that you're supposed to do, so that uh, you stay informed of everything else like that. I gotta go. This smells too good. All right, Chaim, and uh, I'll see you next time.